skiers, it's Bob with SkiEssentials.com. Welcome to our 2024 ski test. We got a Head Core 91 for you today. Uh, just a new graphic to this ski. Still remains that same awesome all mountain women's ski uh, using Head's uh, pretty particular blend of carbon and lightweight wood in order to generate the power that we normally see from a ski at this level that uses multiple sheets of metal or other additives. Uh, Head really likes to stick to that lightweight and stiff material, uh, blending carbon and graphene into the core of this ski in order to get it to just hit that maximum level of performance, responsiveness, and edge grip uh, while keeping it very light. These core skis, you know, we've talked about it for years that they just have this amazing ratio of stiff flex to lightweight that just isn't found in other uh, advanced and expert skis in this range. Um, and for a lot of people, like that's definitely what they're looking for. Um, you know, I, I will say it's not for everyone, uh, just because it is such a light and stiff ski uh, that you should have either a, a certain level of skill in order to get it up on a higher edge angle, uh, a certain amount of weight, you know, if so, uh, someone like me that's a little bit heavier. I do great on these core skis because I just have enough weight to bend them. Um, you know, they're just uh, incredibly stiff, so they do take some effort to, to get up on edge. Uh, and then at the same time, there's another group of people that are lighter weight, less skilled skiers that are happy using these at shallower edge angles and they just want something maneuverable and responsive uh, for an all mountain ski that has a lot of versatility and that's kind of where, that's kind of where this thing really does a good job is kind of mixing those attributes. Um, but you know, it's kind of one of those try before you buy type of skis for sure. Uh, and it's definitely happier from a high performance perspective at a higher edge angle. Uh, they are built with a blend of Karuba and Poplar in the wood core. That Karuba is really, really light. The Poplar adds a little bit of density to it, uh, but overall the main core of this ski is, is quite light. And then two laminates of carbon, uh, two sheets of fiberglass, and a strip of graphene going through. Graphene is extremely stiff and light, so that adds to the character of the ski. Uh, when they do the carbon laminates, they have one on the bottom that's flat, full width, and then the top laminate is curved to match, uh, to match the curvature of the ski on the top sheet here. And anytime you're putting carbon or any other material uh, in a three-dimensional format, you're boosting the stiffness of it. So that upper layer of carbon really adds a lot of responsiveness to the ski because it is curved. Um, they did add dampening layers uh, last year to this one, so that carries through to this year, as well as the legit top sheet. They always kind of just left it as a, as a polyester fleece top sheet to uh, keep the lightness down, keep the weight down, um, but they've gone with this more structured top sheet that is uh, a little bit of a structural laminate as well, just adds a, a, a slight amount of vibration reduction to the ski. Uh, and that's great news for those that kind of found it to be a little bit on the chatty side. Uh, but this is the 163 here. And on the scale, it is 1,545 grams. So entering that zone of where uh, we see a lot of hybrid touring skis, uh, certainly having this as a backcountry option is, is squarely on the table, uh, just highlighting the versatility of it as well. Um, but yeah, really, really fun build, you know, lots of carbon. I really enjoy carbon powered skis. Um, you know, just, you get that excellent blend of grip and, uh, and precision to it. Nice positive camber underfoot. Anytime you really see that bounce coming back, you know that the ski has a lot of natural energy built into it. And then, you know, enough rocker to handle soft snow, you know, at 91 millimeters underfoot, more squarely in that versatile all mountain range. But because it's kind of, you know, in that mid-range zone, it has a lot of capabilities. Lighter skis float better than heavier skis. Um, so you don't need quite as much rocker to make it float. Um, but nice spoony tip shape. We've kind of really enjoyed this shape for years. Little bit of taper, not too much. Uh, and then just a nice round shape overall. And then a little bit of, little bit of uh, rocker in the tail, not too much more to make the exit of the turn easy. If you think of a ski that's this stiff and precise and responsive, if you went full square in the tail here, you know, without this rounded side, it would just be a lot more demanding. So this just kind of opens it up, opens up the accessibility, makes it a little friendlier. Uh, but when you hook into the tail, you're gonna feel the stiffness of that carbon 
uh, right, to the, right to almost the very end. So it really enhances that on-trail performance. And then that lightweight just brings that off-trail versatility uh, to the next level, which is really, really fun. Um, you know, a, a, a weird range of skier on this thing. You don't have to be an expert, uh, especially if you just want to use it in more moderate turns and kind of more of a skidded format. Uh, it's really easy to use if you're doing that. If you're trying to get it up on edge and you don't quite have the weight or the power to get through that turn, that's kind of where you see uh, that chatter come in. But overall, uh, great ski for all mountain skiing, you know, whether you're advanced, expert, intermediate. It's really about how you're using it in an edge angle format. That's where we found kind of the biggest variance in how these skis affect different skiers. Uh, but make sure you check out this Headcore 91 here at SkiEssentials.com, and we'll see you out there on the hill. Bye.